Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh Bashim Abashai, Bahashim Wakak Badash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered among the four corners of the earth, among the heathen nations that be like unto the speckled bird. Meaning those of our people who look like the heathen nations. But their bloodlines go back to the patriarchs of Israel. And to the Yaquaf that are listening and learning, that would be the women of Israel, the few that are listening and learning, to you I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago. And uh, this is the video that was put up uh, by this lady here. This, it is the, the video was called A Quick Message to My Hebrew Israelite Brothers and Sisters. And I believe her name was Donna. And, um, and she read Isaiah 14 and 2. And she, and she knows that the so-called Negroes, well, she didn't say Latinos and Native Americans, but she knows that the so-called Negroes are of Judah. That much she knows. And, um, but she, she put herself um, as a stranger that would cleave. Which is, a, which is a mistake. So I'm going to correct her and whoever taught her that. You know, that's, some, that's like that, 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 uh, that bubble-eyed bubble blackfish, you know, uh, Rakaz doctrine. All right, because Edom, they're going to be oppressed as they are oppressed and double according to the Bible. All right. And if indeed she is an Edomite, I don't think that she's a scattered speckled bird at all. I, I believe that she's an Edomite. But nevertheless, let's begin with, with the reading. This is Isaiah 14, 1 and 2. Uh, and it reads, For Yahweh will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave unto the house of Jacob. All right. The strangers that, going, that are going to cleave are the scattered Israelites that were scattered among the heathen nations. All right. Now, when you get to verse two and it says, and the people shall take them and bring them into that place and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. So this woman is from Mississippi, and that was one of the main places where the Israelites were taken and oppressed and were, and, and, and were captives to Edomites. So according to this scripture, they're going to, um, they're going to, to, to uh, possess their oppressors. That would be her and her, her people. All right. So that first set of strangers is talking about the scattered Israelites, because any time an Israelite was not in the land of Israel, they were referred to as a stranger. OK, and then the Israelites became Gentiles. The, you can find that history when you read in the Apocrypha, the history of the interactions uh, of the Israelites with when, when uh, with uh, with the Grecians. When Alexander of Macedon, when his men took over uh, Jerusalem, North Africa, you, you, many, most of, uh, of Europe, and the Israelites were scattered to all those places. All right. And we're going to, to uh, continue to read to prove that point. So let's go to now to uh, Isaiah 49. 22 and 23 and it said thus saith Yahweh power behold I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people so he's not going to set up a standard to the Gentiles all right he's talking about the scattered Israelites and when did he and who, who and who did he and he used Paul to do that Paul took the gospel to the scattered Israelites and we're going to prove that when we go to the book of Acts all right and it, and it says Thus saith Yahweh power, behold, I will lift up my hands to the Gentiles and will set up my standard to the people. And they shall bring thy, uh, thy sons in their arms and their daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. 
And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. And they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am Yahweh, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. So this has not happened yet. See, the, the elites, the royals, and the higher-ups of the other nations are going to be our nursing mothers. Their, 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 their men are going to be uh, servants. This is what we're reading. This is what the Bible is talking about. All right? Clearly. Um, and then she read Jeremiah. Uh, she read the book of Jeremiah. She read Jeremiah uh, 31 and 10. So we're going to read that scripture as well. But... Uh, So let's go there. Let's go to Jeremiah. All right. And I'm going to read verse 11 as well because it kind of answers itself. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 7 because you have to get into the context of, the, of that chapter, that scripture, to find out what the subject matter is. And the subject matter here is Israel. Okay. So at verse 7, it says, For thus saith Yahweh, Halakia. Sing with, with gladness for Jacob and shout among the chief of nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Yahweh, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. See, the subject matter of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, is Israel, not the Gentiles, being in the other, the Gentiles who are the natural, the other nations, not the scattered Israelites who are called Gentiles, like it tells you in John. Uh, the seventh chapter, I believe it's the 35th verse in John, when it refers to them, will he go among the Gentiles to teach the Gentiles and teach our people among the Gentiles? Our people among the Gentiles will be referred to as Gentiles by other Israelites. Let's, uh, before I continue in, in Jeremiah, let's see if I can find that. Because when you read that in other translations, it makes it even clearer than it does in the, uh, in the King James, but here it is. Yes, it says, um, this is John 7 and 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? And yeah, so he was going to the dispersed is the subject matter. Who are the dispersed? The Israelites among the Gentiles. And then it turned around and called those dispersed Gentiles. Because the, the, the Israelites that knew they were Israelites referred to the Israelites who did not keep the customs and who, not did not, who did not live in the land. It referred to them as Gentiles. Okay, so that's a very important point. The second Gentile there, all right, are the Hellenist. Just like it reads in, uh, in, in, uh, in Acts, the sixth chapter, in in the first verse and also in Acts 9 and 20, 29. But let's go back to Jeremiah before we go to Acts. Um, verse, this is Jeremiah 31 and 8. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the coast of the earth. And where is the north country? Here in America. All right? Because America has the biggest population of all 12 tribes in one place. All right? And gather them from the coast of the earth, and with them the blind and the lame, and the woman with child and her trip and and her that travaileth with child together, a great company shall return thither. So all the Israelites are going to return home, you know. So she was right about that. So she read verse ten. It says, and it says, hear the word of Yahweh, O ye nations, and declare it in the isles afar off and say he the scout of Israel would gather him and keep him as a shepherd and his flock and so she tried to put herself in that no but you you other nations you are here in the word but the ones being gathered out of those other nations all right are the Israelites and verse 11 proves that point when you read do you keep reading for Yahweh have redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. So, you know, the, the, the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. 
and the wicked was allowed to take the Israelites into captivity because of their, their failings. Now to uh, substantiate what I've said solidly with scripture, let's go to uh, the book of Acts. Uh, the sixth chapter and the first verse and it reads and in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministrations and the, and the, the uh, precept in my Bible is Acts 2 and 41 but when you start reading Acts 2 and 41 the subject matter is the Israelites okay but it says, but it says the Grecians against the Hebrews. So this is what I'm always talking about. History has been taught to where people think that Greece, the people of Greece and Rome were only white people. And that was a so-called, because there's no such thing as white people. It's like there's no such thing as black people. People are different shades of brown and people are different shades of red. And the Edomites are actually red. They're kind of pinkish, you know. Um, because their blood shows forth through their skin. Some of them are really, really red, you know, like that's where you get the term redneck. You know, you, you just click on a, um, Glenn, Glenn Beck's, Glenn Beck's, um, um, YouTube page and you will see a, a man, a red man with white hair who the world calls a white man, but he's, there's nothing white about him except his hair. His skin is actually red. All right, and there are many of them just like that. But nevertheless, to get back on subject matter, um, that word, that Grecian in the Bible is talking about the Hellenists, and I'm going to prove it because I have before me the Zondervan Dictionary Compact Bible. There it is. Okay, the Zondervan's Compact Dictionary Bible. And I'm going to go to uh, uh, Hellenists and read it through the lens. All right, so let's uh, find it. And let's adjust it. Actually, there we go. It reads, Hellenists, Jews who made Greek their tongue and with it often adopted Greek ideas and practices. Acts 6 and 1. All right. So these, these Greeks were actually... Greek speaking Jews who, you know, they were they they spoke Greek. Why? Because of that 400 year period that they were scattered among the Edomites and being ruled over by the Edomites in Greece. OK, so when you go back to Acts 6 and 1, it says, and in those days when the number of the dis of the disciples multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So there it is. Those were Greek. Those, so that was an Israelite uh, versus Israelite issue. Point blank period. Now to uh, solidify that, let's go to Acts 2 and 41. All right. In Acts 2 and 41, it says, Then they gladly received the word were baptized the same day and were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Okay? And that was a precept to uh, what scripture? I think that Jeremiah that she had read. Was it Jeremiah? Or was it uh, the Isaiah 14? One of those, one of those we were reading, something I read gave that precept. Oh no, I think it was the Acts six, and, and it was this. Yeah, it was Acts. Six and one. Let me see. I just want to be sure. Right. So the one about the Grecians. Right. So that was a, So that's what took us to to. Uh, Acts the second chapter, which is one of my favorite chapters, because it proves that the day of Pentecost, and it proves the the that the that the Israelites will be will be called by heathen names because and they were scattered among the heathen, just as the Bible says. All right, so there definitely is two sets of Gentiles. We just proved it through the through the Bible and through the Bible dictionary. Right, all these scholars that put this book together, that put the I mean Zondervan Bibles are written in almost every 
language and for every branch of Christianity. But the, but this deaf this Bible this compact Bible gives you the breakdown of what it's talking about. Okay. But this is a uh, yeah Acts two and forty one and it reads then they gladly received the word and were baptized and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. So who is the they? The they are the Israelites. So and to prove that we're gonna go back. To, in this same chapter to verse 5. And verse 5 says, And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under the sun. So the day of Pentecost, you go back to verse 1, it was Jews that were dwelling there out of every nation. All right? We go up to verse 9 and it tells you, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia, Phygria and Pamphylia and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya and Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Israelites in Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of, of God. So these were all Israelites that were gathered together. All right. Who were living in these other lands, called by those names, speaking those languages. And I'm pretty sure a lot of them were looking like those heathens or those mixed features but they knew that through their fathers they went back to the to the patriots of israel the commonwealth of israel to further solidify that point we jump up to verse 21 and 22 and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of yahweh shall be saved and that christians love to bring that one out all right but when you jump to verse uh, 22 it says ye men of israel hear these words Yahweh Shai of Nazareth, a man approved of, of, of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which power did by him in the midst of you, and as ye yourselves also know. Still in Acts 41. Let's jump over to verse uh, 29. Men and brethren, brethren, meaning kin, kin people of the same uh, uh, ethnos, kindred, men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you of the patriot David. Do well, who's the, the, the patriarch David, man? It's the uh, of the patriarch David, that the patriarch David of Israel. Why would a heathen, an actual Greek or any other heathen, be worried about the patriot the David? He had, they have no, no dealings with him. It says, Men and brethren, let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried in his sepulcher and is with us this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with him and, and sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Hamashiach to sit on his throne. Proven Matthew uh, um, one, 1 and 1 that Yahweh Shai is in the sperm line lineage of David. All right? Through his son Solomon. That's why it starts off saying the son, the, the generations of, of the Lord, you know, Yahweh Shai, the son of Abraham, the son of David. So that's also proven the whole reincarnation thing. It's telling you that he was Abraham's son first who was Isaac, all right? And then it tells you he was the son of David, which was Solomon. All right? Um, I'm going to just read on through with this one. It says, And he seeing this before he spake of the resurrection of Hamashiach, that his soul was not left to, to hell, neither his flesh did, did see corruption, that Yahweh Shai hath power raised up Wherefore, we are our witness. Therefore, being by the right hand of power exalted and having received of his father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he have shed forth this, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself that Yahweh said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God have made that same Yahweh Shai 
whom ye have crucified, both, both Lord and Hamashiach. So this was a message to the Israelites. All right. The heathen didn't crucify the Lord. Our own people did. And this was a message to those people who were related to him by blood through their patriarch David. So with that, I want to give all praises going honor unto Yahweh, Bashem Hashem Rakarkwadash, Wa Ababa Shalom.